And so Amen. with that, uh, I'm going to introduce you to those who have just joined us, Richard. Uh, it's sharp four o'clock and here we are with Richard Johnson from the UK. Um, Richard is one of the co-founders, in fact, of uh, is the founder of Christian Mindfulness in the UK. Um, and he was born out of over 20 years of mindfulness, meditation and contemplative practice. Richard has completed the UK Mindfulness Association Practitioner Certificate and Association Foundation course. He has a living life to the full CBT Practitioner Certificate with five areas and a BA Honours degree specializing in marketing and economics. He is also the founder of Revivers Again Ministries. And I want to tell you one thing, friends. He is a true friend and a beloved of the Lord. So we are grateful. We are eternally blessed to have Richard Johnson to prepare our hearts before we receive Holy Communion and know more about the one and only true beloved Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Richard, it's a joy to, to meet with all of you in one space. And, uh, and in that space is the glory of God. And, and I believe that this is the, the crux of life when we meet one another and the conversation is only about one person and that it is the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Um, it is such a, a beautiful moment that we live for that one person and we live that one life. And, uh, and, and this is the ultimate of being created in His image. Uh, that we don't live several lives for multiple people, uh, but we end up by living for one person. And I think uh, it's, it's such a joy. And how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Yes, um, I'm doing good. Uh, just finishing my second coffee of the day. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> so just about ready to go. Yes. Are we live? <laughs> okay. So we are live, actually, with uh, Richard Johnson. Richard... Give us a, a, a little bit of a take before we go into meditation on the beloved. I mean, what frame of, I mean, how did you prepare this? Because this is, it reminds me of the beloved disciple of Jesus. And mm. uh, his head mm. was always on the bosom of the Lord. Well, and you that know what, love was special. Yes. If you look at the baptism of Jesus and, uh, you know, John the Baptist baptizes Jesus. He comes up out of the water and the Holy Spirit is, comes like a dove uh, upon Jesus. And the voice of the Father is heard in right. that moment. And the Father says, this is my beloved Son. In him I am well pleased. Powerful. So, um, the interesting thing about this scripture is that Jesus has done none of his earthly ministry at this point. So the Father is speaking identity to Jesus in the hearing of all those who were there. And he doesn't say to Jesus, you need to do all your ministry before I'm pleased with you. No. Uh, he begins from the point of identity. So he receives the blessing of the Father. He receives and stands in his identity as the beloved Son of God. And, of course, each one of us is the beloved uh, you, if you look in uh, the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, mm -hmm. what we find there is a bridegroom and a bride. Yes. And the bridegroom is Jesus and the bride is the church. And the great uh, wedding banquet, the wedding feast of the Lamb is spoken about. And all of the people of God will be gathered up into that banqueting hall and we will feast on the spiritual riches that we have in Christ. And the reason that we will be gathered up into that place is because we are the beloved of God. We are the bride of Christ. 
he has set his affection on us. And mm. there's a calling on each one of us to step in to our identity before we even think of ministry. It's, mm. it's, I would say it's even more important than ministry because people who don't walk in their identity and right. do ministry can cause more damage. Yes. So it's really isn't that, important. Isn't that powerful uh, moment? I mean, that's, that's a mindful moment when he's identifying his begotten son. And, uh, and the, the next completion of that identification is when Jesus prays his last prayer and then he says, the time has come. Father, glorify yourself. And yeah. he goes to the cross. Isn't that a completion of what we are supposed to do in this life? Uh, and that is we receive our identity and then we are supposed to journey through this life. And at the end, when we are ready to go, Father, I have lived a life to glorify your name. 